Eh, I guess that works. Thinking of these rhymes gets a little tricky, but it's the bar for bar weekly. It kind of works, I guess. Anyways, <laughs> today is February 28th, or by the time you watch it, the 29th, or later. I don't really know when you guys watch this. 2020. Uh, not a whole lot of major things happened this week. So I'm going to go over some things that I kind of missed towards the end of the last week. Because, like, it happened on, like, Saturday night. So it wasn't able to be put into the weekly. Uh, the biggest thing is that Paul Rosenberg left Def Jam. Or left his position at Def Jam. So he was basically, like, the main man in charge. And was running Def Jam from, like, 2017 till last week. Um, no one's upset about this. <laughs> Everyone's just like, oh, cool. He's gone now. I think it's really just because everyone expected him to do like amazing things because F Jam's always been that label that puts out classics. And we haven't really gotten a classic in the last couple of years because there's really no one signed to Def Jam anymore except for like Big Sean and the rest of good music, I guess. But even then, like no one's really dropped a classic. Um, so... That's good and bad news, I guess. It's, I mean, it's good news for everyone else because now maybe they'll actually put more effort and try to get good like albums out there. There's no word on who's actually going to be the next CEO or whatever his position was again. But we do have a tweet from 50 Cent who said, or and he says, I've decided to take the job at Def Jam. Somebody got to do it. Who better than me? And they had the emoji. Um, <laughs> he's probably just trolling. Because that's all 50 Cent does now. He trolls and makes TV shows. I haven't watched his new show, but I heard it's good. But yeah, we know. We'll see. Something's going to happen soon. Because it makes no sense to lose someone that high up. At the beginning of your year. Or well. Yeah I mean it's still beginning of the year. I don't know if they follow the normal fiscal years. That most companies do. But. Regardless it's like. It's nearly quarter one. So. Not that. Not, not the best idea. Anyways. <laughs> moving on. Drake says that his album's coming. He didn't say when. And we don't know what to expect. But he said it's coming. <laughs> Basically, what he said was... Like, it was in reference to Scorpion. He was like, oh, on my last project, I just want to go for volume. This time I'm going to try to be more concise. Which is good, because I don't want to hear the same song for two and a half hours. It's exciting. I mean... It's Drake. Everyone's going to listen to it. Everyone's going to buy it or listen to it. Everyone's going to stream it. And Drake's going to make a lot of money. The Roots got a street named after them in Philly, which is... It's a good look for them. <laughs> They've been repping Philadelphia for... What was it? Like, almost 30 years now? Like... I forgot what album it was, but one of their albums just celebrated 25 years. So... They've been around for a long time, putting Philly on the map. Um, so the street's going to be, or the original street was called um, Passiang, Passiang Avenue. Now it's going to be renamed to Avenue of the Roots. So, cool. Good for them. I'm excited. Next we have Jay-Z and Yogati, who... Helped another 150 inmates at the Mississippi Department of Corrections um, file lawsuits uh, for their exact word was barbaric um, prison conditions. So Jay Z, Yogati, and the rest of Team Rock is requesting that the conditions are immediately met. So we'll see, because this is like the second major lawsuit that they've done, like, 
against the Mississippi uh, Department of Corrections. So that's... You'd think they would figure it out by now. <laughs> but it's nice to see that Jay-Z and Rock Nation in general is using their platform to really just help people. It's also really nice to see that like just people who can do these things are actually doing it. And not just saying, oh, we should do these things. It's good for the community. So, good job, Jay-Z. <laughs> All right. In other news, Tory Lane said that his next project, the new Toronto 3, is going to be his last album on Interscope. He said that he had a five-album deal with them, and he's delivered 12 projects. So that's including all the mixtapes that he's done. I don't know really the details of his contract and don't know if like mixtapes and EPs and other projects count towards that album count. Uh, it probably doesn't considering he's done 12 out of 5. <laughs> but regardless, it's exciting to see him move out from Interscope because I know if, a few months ago he was about to go on Instagram Live and just air everything out. Thankfully he didn't, because that usually doesn't go well when you just kind of talk shit about your employer and <laughs> want to continue working in that field. Like, at least, at least do it after you leave. <laughs> or, like, do it in a way that won't screw you out of any money going, this, going forward. Um... But we'll see. That uh, His new tape's supposed to drop in March, so... Soon. Very soon. Now... Pusha T. I got a couple of news about Pusha T. First thing is that he announced his new label, Airwave. Um, which is going to be a... Music group, essentially. Comprised of... Uh, like just artists from Virginia or at least that's the, the main focus that they're going for um, which is coincidentally where Pusha T is from which is probably why he's choosing artists from Virginia uh, so far he's signed Kari 1X or Kari 1K I know what letters are uh, apparently their album dropped last month didn't give it a listen yet, but if Pusha T has, or if they have a Pusha T cosign, you should probably check it out. Uh, speaking of Pusha T, last week he dropped a track with Jada Kiss's album, or with Jada Kiss, for Jada Kiss's upcoming album, which was supposed to drop today but didn't. Um, the title was the title of the track was "Hunting Season," and it was removed due to the unfortunate passing of Pop Smoke. The post that Pusha T had put up says, Hunting season was a request that Ice Pick J, RIP, always had, and in light of his death, me and Kiss made an incredible song. With that being said, the whole concept of hunting season and the hypothetical ideas of killing rappers isn't setting well with me while mourning the recent death of Pop Smoke. Rest in peace, Pop, and condolences to his family. So, I mean, I have a lot of respect for Pusha T for acknowledging that it was poor timing. Um, especially because, like I mentioned last week, Pop Smoke's death was definitely a hit and not just a random, random crime. So... The track hunting season where they're going around killing rappers is kind of in bad taste at the time. The track's still out there somewhere, um, probably on YouTube or SoundCloud, but it's not on streaming sites like Spotify or Apple Music. So, if you really want to listen to it, it's out there. There's, I mean, that. I feel like that might have some sort of like play into why Jada Kazam got pushed back to. Because they're like, ah, oh, 
shit, we have to fill another track. Um, that's really all I have for news. It was incredibly slow. Oh, Party Next Door still didn't drop his album. That fucking liar. That's all. He was supposed to drop it last month. Then he pushed it to this month. Now it's March. Maybe he's pulling the weekend and just gonna drop it the same day. I got album releases now, if I can find them. The There wasn't anything that, like... Oh, God, I'm just lost now. There wasn't anything that was, like... I was really looking forward to, except for that Jadakiss album. Um, which, like I said, we did not get. But I also was looking forward to the new 38 Special album that he did with Planet Asia. Because... Like I mentioned last week, the album he did with El Camino was amazing. It was like 15 minutes long, and the production and everything just worked really well. So the album he did with Planet Asia was pretty good as well. Uh, Planet Asia, if you don't know, is from Fresno. So, I mean, I have to listen to him. (laughs) But it was a really good album. The production was... Interesting. 38 Special continues to have a very different sort of production that I'm used to, but it just seems to work well with the artists that he's been working with recently. Other than that, I also got an album from Smoke Dizza that I listened to titled A Closed Mouth Don't Get Fed. And I actually forgot about this album. But when I started listening to it, I realized he has a lot of features that I wasn't expecting. Like, the first track featured West Side Gun. And this is one of the few albums that I didn't go into, like, looking at the track list and seeing the features. So, like, when you get halfway through a song and you start hearing do 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 and, like, it just keeps going, like, it kind of throws you off. <laughs> Um, but other than West Side Gun, he also has T-Pain, um, he had Dave East, which actually makes sense, because they're both from New York, um, he had Buddy, so there's a lot of features that I wasn't really expecting from Smoke Dizza, so definitely a good album, it's also only like half an hour long, so I'll just listen to it, um, Princess Nokia dropped a couple albums, which... I didn't check out yet, but it's supposed to be like two completely different albums. Uh, The first one's titled Everything Sucks, and the other one is Everything is Beautiful. Other than that... Oh yeah, Young Nutty dropped an album this week. No one was expecting it because it dropped on a Monday. (laughs) It's... I mean, if you you like Nutty, you'll like it. It's it's a trap album. There's one beat... On this album, it was on the track. I think it's like Blue Cheese something. Uh, I'm gonna find it right now because it's gonna bother me. Uh, but anyways, like the the beat was just like it was just goofy. <laughs> it was just a really fun beat to listen to. Um, oh, Blue Cheese Salad. <laughs> so definitely check out that track at least. <laughs> Uh, we also have an album from G. Erbo titled PTSD. I haven't really listened to him too much in the past, but I'm really liking this album. It's a lot more somber than expected. Um, especially because it's titled PTSD. I guess that makes sense. Um, the album art's pretty cool because it's basically the American flag with all the stars being... Well, now, now I feel like an ass for saying it's cool, but... All the stars are um, his dead homies, basically. There's like 50 of them on it. It's a really interesting album art. Um, I didn't. I, I only gave it like one listen, but the track with Chance, Juice World, and Uzi is probably the best track on the album, only because. Chance the Rapper actually raps really well. And I haven't heard him rap like this in years. 
Um, so I'm not going to say much else, but it's probably the best verse he's dropped since Acid Rap. And Clemens also dropped an album. Haven't listened to it yet. And there was another one. There was another one I wanted to say. Oh yeah, Brent Fai has dropped a new version of his EP that was titled Fuck the World. But this time it's Fuck the World, Chop Not Slop. He basically just released a chopped and screwed version of his album. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, that's all I had. <laughs> it's been a slow week, like I said. I don't have any, like, 10-minute rant about Royce's album. Actually, no, I'm not going to talk about that because it made me very upset. That's all I have. Thank you. Please like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. Finger points. Bye.